Hey everybody, my name is Ricky. Welcome to the HitLab Academy. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can automate any plugin or virtual instrument in Logic Pro X. Being able to automate plugins or instruments is an invaluable tool in the DAW that you work in for both producers and mix engineers. We all have those moments where we want an EQ filter to gr sort of open up as a track plays, uh, or you want a reverb to feel like it's growing as the song goes, or you want different levels of saturation on different parts of your song on the bass. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. The ideas here you could obviously then apply to literally any effect inside of Logic. All of them work in the same way. So let's head into this project here. I've got a bunch of groups here and if, if you don't know why I'm putting things in the summing folders go watch my other video on how to organize your logic pro sessions. The first one we're going to look at is we're going to be looking at the drums on this one and if I play the verse here you'll see that the drums have this sort of filter they almost sound a little bit underwater a little bit muted uh, which is really really nice what it does for me here is it makes them less strong it makes them more subtle in this part of the song this particular song has the whole intro verse first chorus just sort of piano and these pads so when the drums come in I wanted them to come in a little bit more subtle and we, the one way to do that is basically by taking an EQ and having a low pass filter and dragging this top all the way down to cut out all of the highs in this purple region here. So let me play that same drums for you without this EQ. So we will bypass it for a second. Um, I'm going to play from the end of the chorus. Yeah, so it comes in, but it's almost a little bit abrasive there for me. I wanted the drums here to come in a little, a little bit more subtle. So if we turn on the EQ. Now, as the song goes, you'll see that when we get to the chorus, I'd want that to open up a little bit. maybe just somewhere there. And then when the bridge hits, maybe they must open all the way up. So the way that we would automate this plugin is by hitting A on the keyboard, or you can go to the top here, there's a little button to activate the automation or A for automation. Then what you would do, I'm just gonna close this window up. Then what you would do, you would come into this little drop down menu on your channel where it says volume. It might not always say this, but as a default, it generally says volume. Then you can go into this and you'll see that there's volume under main. You'll have things like your pan and your solo. And then underneath that, you'll start seeing that every insert that you have on a channel will show up there. Let's add another effect to this channel just for the sake of demonstration. I'll add two more here. If I press A and I go under that same menu again, you will now see that as insert one, we've got the channel EQ, which is there. We've got this Abbey Road saturator, which is there. And I've got my Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is the third one there. So as you add plugins, they'll keep appearing in this list. Basically from there, you just want to go into that menu and be able to select the parameter that you want. So in this case, if we open up the EQ, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the high cut parameter and we're looking for the frequency. This high cut has a frequency, a dB per octave, as well as a Q factor. We're looking for the frequency to be able to automate. So if I go into this menu, go into channel EQ, you'll see it brings up a whole list here. This one's quite easy because it's the one right at the top. What this does is if I click into this empty area, you'll see it'll create a little point for me there and it'll create a straight line like this. Now, if I move this around, you'll notice that this is controlling that parameter, the high frequency on the high cut. All right, so basically what we wanna do is we wanna now go into our verse and we know that we want that to start at around there. And I want the whole verse to play through at that frequency. When I get to the chorus, I want this to open up a little bit like that. So what we're going to do is we can make points here by clicking on this line and then by dragging this up and you'll see we can open that up. 
And these points will be basically this line represents the movement of that parameter. So now if we go from Yeah, and you saw that this opened up that extra little bit, which is really, really nice. If we go to the end of this thing, we've got a little interlude. So I maybe want to have this interlude back, drop back down to the same level that we had here, which was 1320 hertz. So you can go in here and manually create two points on each end and then pull this down to create that sort of thing. But there's a quicker way to do this if you want a whole section to come down. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. If you've got as your secondary tool here, your marquee, you can hold command to access that secondary tool and then you can click and drag and make a selection. And then if you click on the selection, you'll see that what it does, it automatically creates points on each end, two points so that I can then drag that section up or down. That's sort of the quickest way to do this. Then if you wanted to get this very precise, you'll see that this happens to snap on 1320 hertz. If it didn't and you struggle to hit it on the head, you can hold the control button and then you can do fine adjustments on this to really get it to where you want to. The other thing you can do after you've done this, if you want to come in here and just tweak these a little bit to make sure that, that, that there's no uh, sharp cuts on the top there, I sometimes like just dragging these in a little bit. So let's have a look at what's happening there. So at the end of the chorus, it'll be on the opened up filter and then as we go, it's going to close down a little bit. Now on the bridge, I maybe want this thing to open up all the way. So we're gonna pull that up so that it's all the way up to 20K. And then maybe instead of it just jumping out, what I wanna do is I want to maybe have it filter in there gradually, like maybe over the second bar. So that would sound like. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now the only problem I have here is that this line is very linear and it would be nice if this could curve to have sort of like an exponential swell into that bridge section. So the way you would do this is under your tool, you would go to automation curve tool and then you could take this line and you could curve it as much as you want. So I kind of like doing this nice and steep like this and have a listen to the difference. And there we go. So that's a EQ automated on one of the frequencies. You can obviously do the same for any other frequency. So you could take, for example, the low and automate that. You could take any of these other parametric bands and automate them as well. I'm gonna quickly just show you one or two other ideas here. If we come to the piano, what I wanna do with this piano is you'll hear that it starts very dry. I want to take this Valhalla Vintage Verb and I want to automate that so when it hits the verse where a vocal would come in, I actually want the piano to be really, really wet with this reverb. You can obviously do this on a bus, but I've, I've just put the reverb straight on the piano here. So let's have a listen to the reverb on. Yeah, so I want that to be the verse. So we want this to start when I open the reverb on mix with zero. So again, I'll press A for automation. I'll come into this little block here. Right at the bottom will be my Valhalla Vintage Verb. Now what I want to come down here is I am looking for the mix knob, which is down here. And then it brings up that automation lane. Now again, if I just drag that around, you'll see that that affects the mix knob. So what I want to do is I want this to start at zero. I want on the top of my verse, I want that to be at 100%. And again, I don't want this to be linear. I want this to come in at the end. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard to bring up my tool menu. And then I'm going to hit W for the automation curve tool. I can curve it down. And then I'm going to hit T and T again to come back to my normal tool. And then if we play this back from the top.
yeah, lovely, I love that. All right, one last thing today, I'm just gonna show you on the bass guitar. So, so those are all audio effects plugins. What if you wanted to automate a virtual instrument? Exactly the same process. So on the bass here, you'll see that the verse bass is kind of nice and clean. But maybe when I hit, it's got a slight bit of dirt in it, but if I hit the chorus, maybe I want to saturate that bass a little bit more. So if I open up the, the virtual instrument that I have here, I've got a massive bass sound. And if I see on my FX1 here, I've got this classic tube selected. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I like sort of having the verse I want. And then the chorus, when that hits, I want to automate this dry wet knob to bring in some of that saturation, that tube saturation on that. So again, same exact thing. I'm gonna open up my automation lane by hitting A. I'm gonna come in here, go down to massive, and now you'll see, oh, there's a ton of things here. Just go through the list from the top and what we're looking for is the FX1 and we're looking for the dry wet parameter. So if I come down here, you'll see that here we've got master effects, FX1 dry wet. Now if I open up massive again, we can just click there and we can see that that is the right thing, that it is actually working with that knob. All right, so now basically I wanna come down and we can do this really quickly. So I know that I want my first chorus to be clean, second chorus to be clean. Third chorus and bridge, I want to have a bit distorted with that saturation. So I can, again, gonna use my command uh, marquee tool, select that whole thing, and then just click and drag, and I can add, and you'll see it adds it to that region. And then here, maybe right at the end, I want that to be there as well. And then maybe I want it to drop off for the outro again. So you can see how you can create automation like this pretty quickly by just using some selections, clicking, and knowing which parameters that you actually want to automate. Let's have a listen to what that would sound like in the mix. Yeah, and you can obviously hear the piano is swimming in reverb there. So if you wanted to fix that, you can come up here to the piano channel and maybe by, when we hit this chorus here, we want the reverb to be gone again. So now I can just click there, maybe a, two bars before we want that reverb to start dying out. We can do that. I'm gonna curve this out again like that to make that reverb come out at the end and then the reverb will be gone. So it's pretty simple, very straightforward, but very useful as creative tools to shape the texture and the sound of your track. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you found this useful. Please remember to like this video, leave us a comment to let us know what other future tutorials you wanna see, and remember to please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Also, you can visit the hitlab.co.za if you want to work with us or have us work on your mixes or do remote recording for you, we are available at thehitlab.co.za. Have a good week.